Last year I picked up a really cool tip from a fellow hognose snake breeder and it was that the toolbox sold at the Dollar Tree makes a perfect lay box for breeding females. It also makes a really good humidity box in general during their shedding cycles because it has this latch that you can just open up, check on the snake on the inside, see if there's any eggs, and if there's not, you just close them up, put it back. You don't have to take the entire thing out to check it, it's just really slick. So that got me thinking, what else can you get at the Dollar Tree and use for reptiles? I mean, there's caves out there that are marketed for reptiles that cost like $20. And the snake doesn't care what it looks like. It'll be just as happy in just a plastic hide from the Dollar Tree. So we're going to take a field trip today. We're gonna go to the Dollar Tree and see what they sell that could work for our reptilian friends. But I should note that this is not a sponsored video by the Dollar Tree. We just like finding good deals and getting creative with hides and other decor for our reptiles. So we want to go there to show you maybe what you could do to save a few bucks and provide good stimulation or hides for your reptiles. All right, let's see what we can find. get stuck in those. Hey, how about this? You could like open it. Oh, never mind. <laughs> how about this part? Yeah, that takes up too much of the inner yeah. space. Okay, never mind. There we go. It's like that could work. Flipped upside down. That's a little bit tall, I feel. <gasps> to Excelsior. You that. Anyways, what were you doing? Well, I was noticing there's a straw in these bowls, which is kind of cool. So yeah. you can, like drink the soup. No, it's for milk with cereal. Why would you drink the milk? Because that's the best part of having cereal. That's disgusting. It's all like it has chunks of cereal in it, and it's cereal tasty. No, it's but sugary it's not milk. Cereal. It's tasty that's milk. Gross. No, I bet more people agree with me on this one. Cereal milk is gross. I've no. never drank. You the milk, always but... drink the milk. Ew. Could maybe be a hide. We'll try it. Oh, here we go. Okay, they're not hides, but we could totally deck out some enclosures with some fig plants. Like, I want to do something like this, but that's kind of kind of flimsy. So I feel like they're just gonna squash it. But then again, I put leaves in there that do the same thing. So I'll get this. Ooh, how about a doll bed? No. <laughs> no? Okay. It could kind of work. I mean, it looks like it would work, but no. Yeah, I don't really Give want... the snake some dignity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this. Look at the length of that tail. It's gotta be a male. Where's the vent? It... Oh, it's right there. Oh, there it wow, is. Wow, look at that wow. tail. Wow. Totally a boy. A or some kind of rat snake. Yeah, I guess it could be that too. Well, does it have a white jaw? Nope. Yellow. What Dollar Tree isn't accurate with their snakes? Yeah, come on Dollar Tree, get it together. Like, what kind of lizard is this? It has a crest of like a Chinese water dragon. Um, but something's Between wrong. tipped iguana. Yeah. This could work, but there's no way you're gonna cut that, you know? Without breaking it. Right, right, so not that. Ooh. You can still sneak under that. Yeah, that's a water dish and a hide underneath. That's cool. This is where we get our Big, big snake, water bowls. That's exactly it. <laughs> well, I was hoping that like containers would work, but they're all clear. So a reptile isn't gonna feel very secure in this. So I think that is now out of the question. We have to get more creative. You know what those work well for though, don't you? Praying mantises. Incubation containers. Oh, for eggs? Yep. Yeah, they do work really well for eggs. Yeah, I think we have a handful of things from here for eggs. Oh, we totally do. What about that? Oh yeah, they'll be very secure in that. Oh hey, those look familiar. Got it. Nice, it's the toolbox. That is a perfect hide. Okay, we're getting one. Thanks. Yep. And we are back with our haul from the Dollar Tree. Don't mind the background, we're just cooking dinner at 9.45 at night. But I wanted to show you what all we picked up. So we found a lot of foliage, like fake flowers and vines at the Dollar Tree. And we picked some of these up because it's not a hide but they add a lot of stimulation or enrichment into a snake's environment. 
these flowers. There were, there's, all, there's a whole wall of flowers. It was crazy. So I picked out a few. And these are not only something for snakes to like slither on or through or burrow underneath, but they also offer some olfactory or smelling stimulation to the snake's environment as well. So, I mean, same thing with these guys and the vines you can get creative with. So I picked some of those up, each of course for a dollar. And then for the hides, we found some cool stuff. This is like, I don't know, some sort of leftover dish, which will be a, a great hide flipped over upside down. But then if the snake is in shed, I figure you could just take this right side up, put the lid on that it came with, and since you'll still have a hole on the side, you can then turn it into a humidity box. And then when snake's done shedding, take the lid off, store it, and use it as a cave again. So it's like a multi-use hide, I thought. Another one I thought was pretty cool was this. They're just like soccer cones or some sort of sports. I don't know, I don't do sports. They're used for sports and they're cone shaped, but they have a hole on top already. So I don't even have to add a hole to these. I'm just gonna set them right in the enclosure as is. Next, this is kind of an odd one, but there was a an army helmet that we picked up because this has kind of a raised edge in the front. So we figure you can just kind of nestle in the back and then you have a ready to go cave. Obviously we're going to take off the string and all of this will be getting washed too before putting it in our reptiles enclosures. But the next one was in the pet section of the Dollar Tree and it was a dog food and water dish. For snakes, this could work as, um, I guess a water dish, but also as a hide underneath. So this one was kind of cool. And now we have a couple bigger ones that we found. Ugh. First, we saw a, another toolbox, so we picked one of these up because they are so awesome. This is probably my favorite one still from the Dollar Tree to use as a hide. Although most of these hides you can kind of choose if you want the entrance to be on top or on the side. For the toolbox, because of the lifting lid, I am still going to put the entrance on the side, and I'll show you how to do that later. Next, we have four bigger snakes. The bowls, the like candy dishes or trick or treat dishes. These work great for our bull snakes because they can curl up in them. These you just flip upside down and you know, I'm not a huge fan of the white ones. So these might actually get turned into hides for like our rodents, but these darker colored ones will really help the snakes feel more secure inside once an entrance is added. Now for these, we've found, cause we have used these before. You can see them in other videos actually. When you add the entrance to this, if you cut all the way down to the edge, the sides are kind of flimsy because they don't have that all around support of this rim anymore. So another thing you can do is slice just above the rim and then make your entryway. And then the rim is still there, keeping everything nice and like solid. However, if your snake is half in its cave and half out, then you have to pull them all the way out in order to remove them from their enclosure. Cause, so that's the only drawback to only cutting or to cutting an actual hole instead of like a door. Hopefully that made sense. It's just something to keep in mind. And the last hide we found from the Dollar Tree is an oil pan. This is for cars or autos to let liquids drain into. I assume it's an oil pan, right? Yeah, it's an oil pan. Okay, okay. So same kind of thing. You could use it since it's so flat on the bottom. You could use this as a water dish or a soaking dish, or you could flip it upside down and use it as a cave instead with some things on top of it even because it's so flat. Now the other one, like these bowls you can't really use as a water dish because they're so top heavy they're really only going to be used as a cave but anything that has a flat base to it could be used either way so to turn all of these into functional hides let me now show you how to carve a hole in the side of them we are literally going to melt away the plastic in kind of an archway to create that entrance for the snakes and to do that we just use in a sufficiently ventilated area, of course. Uh, we use a soldering pen, and this is just something, what was it, 30 bucks at Home Depot? Yeah. 20 like bucks maybe? Yeah. I don't know. Of course, be careful when using this, because that's very hot, because that is actually going to be what melts this plastic. It's kind of a long process, so bear with me. And of course, just use scissors and you could cut out an opening like this, but doing so often when you're cutting like plastic, it kind of snaps and cracks, which creates some sharp edges. So we've found the best way to create soft edges is by melting the plastic with a soldering pen. And then you just kind of carve it right out and it melts itself 
and smooths out any of those points. So you can do it another way. I'm sure there's other ways out there. Just be careful with any tools that you end up using, but this is just what we do. So if you're gonna shop at the Dollar Tree, look at how thick or feel how thick the plastic is on what you're buying, because obviously the thinner the plastic, the quicker it'll melt. Like this bowl right here is pretty thin, which is why it's going quite a bit faster. Now we'll just do the rest of them and you know kind of how the drill goes. We'll do the same thing with this too, by the way. But since it's a box, I mean, it's a little different. I'm just gonna poke a hole in, not down here, cause I'm going to use moss in here and I want that moss to stay inside. So I'm going to elevate the entrance just a little bit so the moss is less likely to get pulled out when the snake comes out of the cave. Now keep in mind that if everything in your reptile's enclosure is smooth plastic, I mean, don't get me wrong, this plastic is insanely easy to clean and disinfect. It's really convenient for that case or for that matter. But if everything is smooth, then your snake isn't going to have something rough to rub up against to shed its skin. So if you need to add some texture to these, or if you just want them to look more natural anyway, you can do something like this. For these two hides, Ed and I attempted to deck them out with some natural looking um, materials, basically. It was our first time trying something like this though, so give us some slack, you guys. <laughs> so what we did was we coated each of these hides with silicone, which is 100% safe for reptiles, as long as you let it cure before introducing the reptile to it, of course. And then we coated them in sand and sphagnum moss. We figured the bottom rim of each of these hides is just gonna be covered in substrate anyway though, so that's why that bit is still a bit exposed. Um, and we just didn't worry about completely covering it up, but I think they turned out okay. This is obviously not a professional job that we're doing here, but it looks a little bit better than a white bowl and an orange cone. You could even go as far as theming like your creations to the habitat of the reptile. Like if you use moss, you could wet it down and use it in something tropical. In the sand, you could keep in something more desert-like. So there's a lot of opportunities for cool hide builds from Dollar Tree products. Now, of course, we're going to, like I said, let the silicone set before introducing our reptiles to it. And I would wait at least 12 to 24 hours. Re just read the instructions on the back of the silicone tube and uh, make sure it's completely dry and odors have dissipated before the reptile gets introduced to it. But I think they're really gonna like this. Another thing Ed noticed just based on our little experiment here was that if you use sand at all, and for this one, I like poured sand in between the moss, you use something that's a little bit coarser than what we use. We used a very fine sand and that left a very thin layer. If you want to give it more volume, then using something coarser might actually give you more of the desired effect you're going for. So overall, I'd say it was a successful field trip to the Dollar Tree. We found a ton of stuff that you can use for your reptiles there and at only a dollar each, you can't beat that really. I mean, we got all of this stuff, which included six of these bowls for under 20 bucks. So we have a lot of cool things to play with now for our reptiles and hopefully you got some new ideas from it too. If you use any other unconventional products for your reptiles hides or water bowls or tubes or enrichment, let us know what they are in the comments below because we are always looking for new enrichment ideas, especially if it's something that's not marketed towards reptiles but you can creatively use it for them. We'd of course like to thank our Patreon backers for supporting this channel. It was your funds that funded all of this today and allowed us to make a video to teach you how to make some creative hides of your own. So thank you guys and thank you everyone for watching today's video and we'll see you next time. You know what those work well for though? Praying mantises. Egg laying, or egg, you know what those are. <laughs> really? I don't think that could, oh, oh so fail. Cool we tried to deck them out. This was our first time. First time? So to turn all of these into functional hides, let me show you how we carve a hole in the side of them. You gonna put a hole in that one? No, not in that one. Let me try that again then. How long did you need to cook the eggs? I don't oh yeah, those around. you just put it up to boiling and then you move them off. For how long? I don't know. I usually just forget about them. I think he said seven minutes. But when I did seven minutes once, they weren't done enough. So then my new strategy is just to forget about them. And then they're hard boiled.